We now have four profitability ratios in our arsenal that we can go and use to analyze and interpret the results of any business. Let's go and do that to Enron up until its collapse in 2001. So up until the year 2000, Enron had been very profitable. We can see by the year 2000, it had made a net profit of $979 million. But what we've learned is that that doesn't mean they've got good profitability. Profitability is when we look at net profit by comparing it to another number, such as sales or assets or capital. So Enron actually, with a, such a large net profit, we do know though it went bankrupt in 2001. So if we go back and look at the financial reports for 2000, are there any clues that this business wasn't very profitable? So we can go and uh, look at what the share market was doing during that era and see that if there were signs, either no one noticed it or they just weren't there. Perhaps there actually was a very profitable company. Um, but looking at the share market, it basically valued the company at about $40 at the start of the year and it finished basically double at $80. So people clearly either didn't notice or didn't put too much importance on Enron's profitability. Let's go and use the 2000 financial reports for Enron to calculate our profitability ratios. So the first one we learned about was the gross profit margin. Now for Enron, that was only 6%. What that means is for every dollar of sales that came in, that must mean their cost of goods sold was 94 cents. That's a really slim gross profit margin of 6 cents on every sales dollar. And what that means is they've got a very high, they're not charging much markup on the goods that they sell. And the problem there is they've only left with six cents in every sales dollar and they've still got to cover their other expenses like rent and insurance. So that'll show up in our net profit margin. So for Enron, the net profit margin was only 1%, which is very low. So looking at our income statement, for every dollar of sales that went into Enron, 94 cents was cost of goods sold, which left six cents of gross profit. And that must have meant that five cents in every sales dollar was other expenses. So all the other expenses other than selling goods it came out at five cents in every sales dollar. And that left only one cent of net profit from every dollar, which is really, really low. How are were they using their assets to generate profit? So we saw that by the year 2000, they actually were basically 10 times bigger than Apple in terms of assets. But were they using those assets very well to make a profit? So looking at the ratio for 2000, we can see that ROA was only 2%. So what does that mean? It means for every dollar they had of assets, and that was about $65, $66 billion worth, they were only making a net profit of two cents on every asset dollar, which again is very, very low. And finally, we saw the share market basically doubled for Enron. Um, that's people investing their money. What sort of return did they get on their investment? So if they got out before it went bankrupt, they could have made a profit. But if you actually look at the invested capital, that capital only made net profit of 9%. So if we take a dollar of owner's equity, that was only producing a net profit of 9 cents. So for every dollar of capital invested by the owners of Enron, in the year 2000, that earned 9% which isn't too bad when you compare it to a bank uh, term deposit, but the bank has no risk, whereas Enron's a company, and 9% is not really a lot of interest to compensate for the extra risk involved. And obviously in hindsight, with the company going bankrupt, that figure really needed to be much higher to justify anyone trying to invest in Enron.